Now we'll review two multiplanar motions at two different joints, one being the subtalar joint, which is between the calcaneus and the talus. And as we mentioned in one of the previous lectures, it is responsible for inversion and eversion motions. So inversion and eversion happens at the subtalar joint, but it's typically we discuss in um, sport and clinical situations the multiplanar motion called pronation and supination. And this is not the pronation and supination at a radial ulnar joint. It is down in our foot. And for those of you that are runners or have ever purchased running shoes, you have motion control shoes um, that can control pronation typically and to a less extent supination. So looking at this image, pronation is when you're almost collapsing on the medial side of your instep. Neutral is neutral and supination is when you're riding on that lateral edge of your foot. So what is pronation? It's a combination of dorsiflexion of the ankle joint, medial rotation of the tibia or abduction of the foot, so the foot um, moving away from the midline, and eversion of the subtalar joint. Supination is the exact opposite. It's plantar flexion of your ankle joint, lateral rotation of the tibia or adduction of the foot, and inversion of the subtalar joint. So here is another image of pronation and supination. So what is abnormal pronation? And this pronation, excessive pronation, is getting a lot of press in the blogosphere right now. Um, some people think that there is no abnormal pronation and it doesn't contribute to injury. Um, and then a lot of people believe that it occurs to some of the conditions that we're going to speak of in a few minutes. So as always, things constantly change. And so that's why it's very imperative to keep up on the literature. All right. Some people believe that t the tibialis posterior um, decelerates the subtalar joint. So as you have heel contact, the middle you go into pronation, so the midside of your foot is starting to collapse, and that tibialis posterior is eccentrically contracting, trying to decelerate that motion. Okay, and if you're running, you know, eight miles or running fast, you can imagine that that little muscle, the tibialis posterior, is working very hard. And so, um, shin splints or medial tibial stress syndrome. Um, is comes from the excessive overuse of this muscle. Other injuries that could occur from abnormal pronation are the medial side of the Achilles tendon could become tender and that's from the excessive eversion of the calcaneus. Over and over that medial side of the Achilles tendon starts to become tender. Um, in other cases the arch may flatten and so you could have plantar fasciitis which um, apparently is extremely painful and some of you guys may have encountered that. You could also get hallux valgus or bunions on the medial side of your great toe or your hallux. So if you're constantly pushing that medial portion of your foot in as your toes are abducted, it puts a lot of stress and therefore strain on this medial side of your of your big toe. So why do a lot of people get orthotics? It basically brings the ground closer. So if you have excessive pronation, so an excessive amount of degrees of pronation, orthotics in your shoe basically bring the ground closer and therefore decrease the range of motion of the pronation and could potentially um, mitigate some of the, the previous conditions that we just spoke of. So let's look at abnormal supination, which is a little less common. Typically in the, in the running world, recreational and professional, most people tend to be over pronators. Some people have a rigid foot and have abnormal supination. Supination um, is the point where your foot joins your, your um, talus bones 
kind of lock in and create a, um, a platform to propel yourself forward. And so if you have abnormal supination, you could have minimal shock absorption, right? Because if you don't, can't go into pronation and you're locking the supination too much, um, pronation is for shock absorption, supination is for transferring the load to the next stride. And so you could decrease your shock absorption, which could increase the loading on that part of the foot. You could get sprains on the lateral side of your ankle because you're always riding on that lateral side of the foot. And you may not be able to adapt to terrain changes. So when you pronate, your, your bones relax, your arch relaxes, and it kind of conforms to any changes in terrain. Um, and so if you have an abnormal supination, that may be limited.